All right, my Libra friends, how are you today? Aaron here bringing your monthly horoscope for September 2020. We're going to have the sun moving into your sign on the 22nd. We've got Mercury moving into your sign on the 5th. Mercury and Venus right now are creating a sextile right now in water and earth. Okay, Mercury in, in Virgo, home in Virgo, Earth. Venus in the nature, caring, nurturing aspects of Cancer, right? And they're both moving kind of together. Mercury moves a bit faster, uh, but they're both going to be creating this sextile going from Earth into water or to, to air and fire right around the same time. Okay, so Mercury's on the 5th, and then we've got Venus on the 6th. All right, so this is really powerful. Uh, to get some air and fire in this chart, and it couldn't happen at a better time because Mars is going to retrograde on the 9th, right? So this is awesome. These are these are great things going on, all right? And then Mercury's going to rip through 22 days. It's going to be into uh, Scorpio on the 27th, all right? So let me show you the chart here, and we'll start, you know, talking about all this good stuff. So right now you've got the sun in the 12th house. This is, you know, karmic endings being, you know, trying to focus as much as you can on whatever needs to be released, focus on maybe your creativity, focused on uh, your dreams and your imagination, okay, in your 12th house here. And endings, what, what no longer serves you, let it go. You've got a new beginning coming up here in the next, you know, two months here that's extremely potent, very powerful. And now, we got to look here. There's a lot going on in your 7th house of relationships and partnerships. And this Mars retrograde is in your seventh house. There's no question about it. Okay. So this is like, ooh, you know, where a Venus retrograde is a, is very much about relationships. And we see a lot of relationships, uh, fall apart. Okay. Because we're reevaluating that of which we love. Well, Mars, this is like, I'm, I'm taking action and moving in this direction. And, and this could be not just about love. This isn't just about, you know, Romance. This could be any kind of partnerships. This could also be work partnerships, business partnerships. Okay, any kind of partnerships. We're reevaluating them, and we're going slow. Maybe we've been going too fast in certain parts of our lives, and now it's time to slow things down. Okay, so Mercury is going to enter your first house here on the fifth, adding some insight into self. Okay, what does self truly need? What does self truly need? Okay, that's a question to ask yourself over this month. What do you truly need? What makes you happy? You know, I, I got to hang out with some uh, some friends from Chile over over the the weekend, and they hang out with the you know indigenous tribes down there, and they see the indigenous people. Their mantra is gratitude and happiness. Gratitude and happiness. That's what we need. Gratitude and happiness, right? So, what do you need? Gratitude and happiness. How are you going to achieve that? Well, Mars is in your seventh house. About others. All right. How do we achieve this gratitude and happiness? All right. And maybe it's time to slow things down over here. I don't know. Are we, are we, you know, it's reevaluation time, whatever that is, is this job, is this career, is this person, is this thing, is this situation bringing me gratitude and happiness into my life? Maybe I need to reevaluate it. Mercury being in my first house is saying, I got to, I, I live with myself every day. I have to be the one that loves myself and appreciates myself and wakes up with a good mental clarity and attitude to start my day because that's who I want to be, full of gratitude and happiness, right? I hope. <laughs> um, so that's great. And then we've got Venus, what we love, want, and desire, entering the sign of Leo, firing things up, getting passionate, getting excited. And this is in your 11th house about community, not only community, but technology, okay, and a futuristic way of thinking. Okay, so maybe uh, valuing some sort of a, a new way to connect with people or, uh, um, or maybe you're creating a new way to connect with people. Something's going on here, but how, you know, we're valuing our relationships with the community, okay, which is extremely important. Uh, you know, sometimes we can be so focused on ourselves and, uh, that we don't reach out or communicate sometimes enough with other people. And that's certainly been the case for this past few months. It's we've been through some difficult times, you know, uh, very growing pains, right? Growing pains. So now it's just like, hey, well, I value my community. I value these things. So maybe instead of waiting for an invitation, maybe it's you that's going to be creating the invitations, uh, saying, hey, everybody, let's get together. Let's come out and and Let's express and have a good time together, okay? So that's that's going to be happening all month where Mercury is going to rip through 
uh, your first house, you know, enters the fifth, and by the 27th, it's going to enter Scorpio, okay? Mercury's going to enter Scorpio. This is your second house about finances and uh, material possessions and things, the things that you value, the things that you have, okay? Very balanced sign of Libra, very, you know, I love you Libras. I just want to say that. I, <laughs> I'm going to come back here. I love you Libras. You're awesome. You're, you know, you're such caring and, and compassionate people and, and are, are constantly thinking about the other and, and wanting an equal balance of everything. And I absolutely love that about you. All right. Now, when, when, when Mercury enters here on the 27th, your, uh, your second house, you know, this sex, money, power, power, Scorpio, Okay, and, and this is dealing with money and things, you know, maybe there's a taboo, maybe there's a different way of looking at or thinking about how we're making money. Um, you know, you know, some people are afraid to go into the darkness. Okay, well, you're a balanced individual, and you must be willing to go into this darkness to shine that light. And Mercury, Hermes, the messenger of the gods, is the only one that has jurisdiction besides Pluto, okay, to enter the underworld and strike a deal with Lord Hades, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so, you know, we're, we're going to the depths and, and thinking of new ways to make a buck in this world or this depths on of that of which we value in this world. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, the ninth, we talked about this, Mars is going to retrograde reevaluation of a lot of things. This is really about going slow. Okay, whatever it is, it's going slow. And, and, and if this is if this is about a job, if this is like, I'm not sure if I want this job anymore. I'm not sure if I want this relationship anymore. Let me be the first one to tell you, <laughs> don't rush those decisions. And if you're saying, I want to go in this direction with this new job, I want to go in this direction with this new relationship, don't rush those decisions. Okay, if you're going to be in this career for years and years and years, then it'll be there. If you're going to be with a partner for years and years and years, they will be there. There is no point to rushing anything right now. And that is the key and ticket for the next two months ahead. Okay. All right. Now, on the 17th, we're going to have a new moon in Virgo, your 12th house. Again, there's a new beginning in some sort of creative endeavors that's going on here. A new beginning in a karmic release of what's going on here. The stuff that's happening behind the curtains, behind, you know, in the spiritual realms of the abyss, of the unknown, of the non-physical. Okay, so there's something happening here that's saying a new beginning, new karmic relationships, new karmic beginnings uh new karmic endings right there's a, there's always a new ending we don't know how this is going to end but it's going to lead to a new beginning new moons are about those new beginnings and this uh focusedness that you get in the sign of virgo is is really powerful okay so it's like you're able to tap into that spirit realm and bring that insight down into you with great clarity and great understanding okay very fortunate and very blessed place for this new moon to be for you and especially during the time which is all this is going on so it's just like crystal clear visions crystal clear insight from spirit guiding you how to maneuver and make these moves that's on the 17th really cool then on the 22nd Goodbye, Summer. <sighs> Double hand wave. Goodbye, Summer. <laughs> okay. Hello, Autumn. One of our favorite times, but that also means we're going to be spending less time with nature. You know, Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto down here in the fourth house about home and family and nature in the fourth house. Okay. So the sun entering your first house, entering Libra, going to shine its light and balance, going to shine its light on balance, okay, which is extremely important because there's been a lot that's gone on this year where we've all been affected so greatly that we see we see our own problems magnified. And when we and we look at sometimes others that we don't see, you know, it's like I go to work all day and I do all these things and I do this and and you know, you all you do is this, but this person's like, "Well, I I have to do all of these things too." I have to do this, and then when you're not home taking care of the kids, I got to take care of the kids. You know, it's just like we're all playing our part magnificently, and we're all pulling the weight. 
you know. So this is about balance and bringing ourselves to understanding the relationship of ourselves and the other. And this for you being in the first house, this is shining its light on you and your worth and your value. Okay. And it's this, this, what's going to go on this, this month ahead as the sun and Mercury are going to oppose Chiron, oppose Eris, oppose uh, Lilith, I think will already be moved on at that point, and oppose Mars. You know, this is about balance. Are we being treated equally in this relationship? Libra, you're a giver. You know what I mean? You care. You're ruled by Venus. You know, you care and you give and you give and you give. Are you receiving the same that you're giving? And if not, that doesn't mean throw the baby away with the bathwater, but that means it needs to be communicated. And that means especially when Mercury enters your, your uh, second house of Scorpio, those deep, hard conversations need to happen if the balance is off. Okay, sun's going to enter on the 22nd, Mercury's going to leave on the 27th, you only got five days with them two, you know, in, in your sign together. So this is like, hey, if the balance is off, whether it's work, whether it's a, a partnership, whether whatever it is, the balance must be there, an equal give and take. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then we make slow, calculated, methodical decisions on our next actions. This is the Mars retrograde in your seventh house, okay? Slow, calculated, methodical decisions on how we're going to choose to act when Mars comes out of retrograde in November, okay? And remember, it's still going to be in Aries until January. Because what that's, it's like a slingshot, okay? We're getting pulled back and pulled back and pulled back. And Mars is in Aries, its own house, which is fiery and fast. And now, you know, the weed spring is like, where did that weed come from? This was solid concrete. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, this weed just sprung out through the concrete. Like, how did that happen? With great strength and great inertia. So the slingshot is being pulled back during a retrograde. And then, you know, around 11th, I think, in November, boom. You know, Mars wants to rush back ahead again. Okay, and this whole process now through the end of the year is just taking our time and being patient with whatever we're doing and whatever actions that we're taking and especially dealing with the other. Okay, and you have, you have, you know, Uranus here in, in your eighth house. You know, this is like the breakthroughs are coming. These breakthroughs are coming and, and this is a, this, you know, shared resources and what's mine, what's yours. We can have this, this great, whoa. I didn't think this could be this great. You know, I've been saying that about this Neptune, you know, Neptune septile stuff that's been going on. You know, those are going to be revisited too. These septiles toward the end of the year, they're going to be revisited. You know, we're like, wow, I didn't think life could be so good. And when, we, when we're willing to go to the depths of our own soul, when we're willing to go into those dark places, willing to have those dark conversations that are difficult for any sign, let alone the Libra energy, we can have breakthroughs. And if we're not rushing something, I don't know why this popped in my head, but it did. I remember reading this article of, uh, <laughs> it was a, 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 a couple, married couple with kids, and the husband was going through some, some turmoil, some you know difficult times in his life. And he kept saying to his wife, I want a divorce, I want a divorce. And she ignored him and just kept living and kept doing her thing and ignored him and ignored him and ignored him. And ignored this anger that was not hers, that was his. And she knew she loved this man. And understood that this was a hard time that he was going through. And ignored him. And this went on for months, if not a year. And I have to find the article. You can, you can check it out. Uh, and it said, I, I just I kept, I ignored him. I ignored him. I ignored him because I love him. I ignored him because I knew that it wasn't him. It was his frustrations from this job or from these other stresses. And then finally, he recognized this, this stable commitment from his wife. You know, not finally. I mean, it was there, but he saw that value, you know. So going, you know, going in and having some of those more difficult conversations can lead to, and, and being patient as well can lead to greatness. Again, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't want to quit something or rush into something or, or end a relationship or just jump into a new one. You know, uh, this is a slow time right now, and that's all right. 
So this is like, it's, it's very exciting energy. And again, with happy birthday, if you're a, a Libra sun, I gear these more towards rising signs. Uh, so if you know your rising signs, check that out. Um, this is a little different for everybody, but this is the meat of the month of September. It's an excellent month. There's a lot of growth and not being afraid to go to the depths of your soul because that's going to carry in through um, October as well. Okay, having those conversations that are difficult conversations to have, but understanding that depth too. It's not just about communication, it's about understanding, you know, knowing and understanding. Okay. All right, my Libra friends, have a beautiful, beautiful month ahead. I'm going to dive way deeper into these, uh, some of these aspects as the moon, as we follow the moon through the daily horoscopes. So I hope you check us out there. Us? Is there more than one of me? I don't think so. Anyway, hope, <laughs> I hope to see you there. <laughs> All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, have a beautiful month ahead.